its golden gleam and its light led us across the oceans till we found the American dream. Thank you everybody for applauding. Thank you everybody for being here. This is my second take. I uh, ruined the first one. My name is Ingrid Lenny and this is my show American Dream, a show about people, their hopes, their dreams, and their unbelievable realities. My guest today is somebody who is very, very, very close to my heart, and I'm going to explain you later on why I'm saying that. <laughs> that is Congressman Louis Stokes. Thank you for being on my show. Thank you, Ingrid. It's an honor to be on your show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Congressman, uh, I must tell you that I am not, I have done over almost, almost close to 500 interviews. Yes. I am very seldom nervous. I am nervous right now. Oh. So you got to help me a little bit. <laughs> I am nervous. It, it's a pleasure to be on this show and uh, it's an honor to be uh, interviewed by you. I've heard so much about you from my daughter, Lori. She from just, your baby. From, that's right. She's my baby. She's your baby. <laughs> uh, I want you all to know that Congressman Stokes is talking about Lori Stokes, our all beloved and adored uh, WABC news anchor. Yeah, America's most beautiful news anchor, if I may say so. <laughs> and looking at you, Congressman, you are indeed a handsome man, if I oh, may say so. Thank you. But I that's have to kind tell you, she has the beauty from her mother. Oh, listen, that's <laughs> that's absolutely where it comes from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman, we are on the American Dream Show. It starts mm -hmm. where it really, really uh, all starts ever, ever, and ever, and that is with family. Where mm -hmm. did your ancestors come from? That is, first of all, what America, what the nation, the world is about. Tell me, please, about your family heritage. And then we are going to where you sure. are today, sir. We're not able to trace our family heritage back past uh, our great uh, grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, our family c came from Georgia. Mm -hmm. We knew that they were slaves, and uh, in fact, our our great grandfather, mm -hmm. we knew was a slave, mm -hmm. and uh, that's about as far as we've been able to trace our family heritage back. And what that means is that your ancestors built this country. That's really that what is it true. Is. That, that is true. true. Somebody was very much involved with North Carolina. Uh, heritage. I'm very much interested in discussing and learning about North sure. Carolina heritage. Sure. I'm learning that uh, uh, it is the slaves really who made this country to what it is today and made it great and found it and built it. Maybe not found it, but built it. That's true. And having been in Washington so many years, I'm quite familiar with all of the buildings in Washington yes. that were built with slave labor. Yes. Beautiful, historic, mm -hmm. uh, preserved buildings. Mm -hmm. but Great craftsmanship. Yes, yeah, yeah. built by slaves. Mm -hmm. Now, you were uh, closest family, mother, father. I think you were raised by your mother. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, both my mother and my father came from Georgia, okay. different parts of Georgia. They did not know one another when they were in Georgia, mm -hmm. but uh, they came to to Cleveland mm -hmm. independently, separately. They yeah. were part of the out-migration of the early 1920s when many black families and individuals came from the South to northern cities looking for a little better way of life. Mm -hmm. My mother who had perhaps an eighth grade education at most mm -hmm. and who found herself relegated for the rest of her white life to working on plantations, mm -hmm. uh, cropping cotton mm -hmm. and things of that sort. And she wanted a better life. Back breaking. Yes, absolutely. And, and mind bending because uh, there was no ability to be able to think yeah. past uh, being a farmer. 
And so she wanted more out of life. She, she went to Cleveland as a young woman mm -hmm. looking for a chance to work and to have a little better life. My dad, who had been in uh, World War I, mm -hmm. who had uh, left the Army and gone to Cleveland uh, as an individual, and the two of them happened to meet there. He was a laundry worker, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps had less education than she had. Uh, she hired herself out as a domestic worker. She went out into suburban homes where she scrubbed floors, uh, uh, washed clothes for the family, took care of them, served their dinners, and in all respects did whatever type of maid work people did at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my father died mm -hmm. uh, after they got married. I was three years old yeah. and my brother Carl was a year old. Yeah. And so neither one of us can ever remember anything about him. But she loved her two boys and she was determined that um, she raised them. And she also sent for a mother and her mother resided still back in Georgia. She brought her there because on some of the homes where she worked for those people in suburban homes, they required her to be there all week with them so she couldn't come home until Friday night. She spent the weekend with us. She'd go back on the job on Monday morning. So our grandmother yeah. uh, helped raise us and Very spent perhaps even more time with us than, than our mother could spend with us. Yeah, but what was mom supposed to do? She, she trying, had to earn yeah. money, and she did. And you know, in those days, Ann Grid, it was difficult. She told us she made $8 a day plus car fare. Mm -hmm. And car fare, at that time, you, you took streetcars everywhere you went. There were no buses and things. <clears throat> so she, she'd go all out in these suburban homes by taking one streetcar after another to be able to get out there, leaving you know early in the morning and, and that type of thing. She, um, uh, she made $8 a day plus car fare, so she couldn't cut it. She couldn't make it. So she also went on welfare. And then, in order to make things better, she moved into public housing, mm -hmm. uh, which they call the project homes. Mm -hmm. And that's where Carl and I were raised, in public housing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, I want you to know that we are talking about Carl Stowe. Yes, Congressman. Yeah, Carl B. Stokes, yes. who was my, uh, my brother. And he um, became the first black mayor mm -hmm of any major American city in 1967 mm -hmm. when he became the mayor of Cleveland, which at that time was not a black city. Mm -hmm. God so, bless America. It, it, that's <laughs> right, God bless America. Cleveland was only 37% black at that time. Yeah. And so obviously black people uh, could not have elected him as the mayor of that city, much in the same way that black people alone could not have elected a Barack Obama mm -hmm. as president mm -hmm. of the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Carl's election represented the first major political breakthrough for black Americans in this country. Mm -hmm. In much the same way I've watched uh, Newsweek, Time, all of our national publications with the photographs of Barack Obama on the front of them 40 years later. Mm -hmm. I saw this 40 years ago mm -hmm. with my brother Carl when he broke the barrier mm -hmm. and became America's first black mayor. And it is a fact that at that point, uh, Cleveland, they didn't vote for a black man. They voted for the better man. That, that's is, true. Otherwise, exactly he would never been elected. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. exactly what we did right. this time around. Right. We voted for <coughs> the better man. I am by no means a... Uh, uh, um, my husband is one of those Democrats, heavy-duty Democrats. Good but man, I'm one good of those man. Three <laughs> but, but I am, I am in the, right in the middle. I'm one of those people. I'll vote for the better man. I voted for Obama because I believe he's the better man. Sure. Yes, because I have a brain. That doesn't mean that I don't think that um, Mr. McCain is an excellent man and a good man. But uh, right now I am flying that high. And I'm thinking, God bless America. That's, That's so true, Ingrid. But there's even more there. When you look at it, we saw something we've never seen before. And that is the high involvement of young black students, mostly students, college students all over America. They didn't see Barack Obama as a black. They just saw a man whom they saw to be highly qualified, 
with a great vision and someone whom they believed in and someone whom they felt could actually change our country. And for that reason, you saw them leave colleges mm -hmm. and go out on the campaign trail all over the country mm -hmm. following this man whom they believed in simply because he was the kind of a man they felt could lead the country, had nothing to do with color. And they've done something many other whites have not yet been able to do. They've put race in the past. Yes. Doesn't matter to them. Yes. And so to that degree, they led this nation and they led older Americans to understand that it's not about race, it's about who can deliver for America. Unfortunately, guys, I have goosebumps and we have to take a break <laughs> from the American dream. <laughs> Whether you are looking for a total work environment or a combination of business and relaxation, Gurney's Inn Resort, Spa and Conference Center will provide you with the best of both worlds. Our experienced conference staff will ensure your business gathering will run without a hitch. We have your business solutions. Contact our conference center now. I'm here, and for those who tuned in a little later, I'm here at Gurney's Inn overlooking the ocean with Congressman Louis Stokes, a man who definitely wrote American history and helped us to become the nation we are today, the nation which elected Barack Obama as our president. If it wouldn't be for people like you and your bro brother congressman, we probably would not have been able to accomplish what we accomplished this time around to say, you know what, we don't give a damn what color, we just vote for the better person. Well, you know, when it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Recently, uh, the lady who succeeded me in the Congress, mm -hmm. Stephanie Chubbs Jones, mm -hmm. um, had a very untimely death. Uh, she, she died, and at the memorial service recently um, was a fantastic coterie of individuals. She was much loved. On the podium mm -hmm. that day at her memorial service was Senator Kennedy, uh, Senator Clinton, and uh, former President Clinton, um, Senator Barack Obama, and several other notables. When I made my remarks just prior to talking about Stephanie, I said to the audience, um, I said, you know, I have to take a moment and say to Senator Barack Obama that you have given me something I thought I'd never see. I commented that I was 83 years old mm -hmm. and I thought I would never see a African-American nominated for the presidency of the United States. Well, the audience erupted with applause. Yeah. So I turned around and Barack Obama got up from his seat and he came up and the two of us hugged one another. And then as we broke from the, the hug, and I reached out my hand and we shook hands and I said, um, he said, um, I'm here because of you and your brother. Oh. And then I, and I said, I said to him, I said, thank you. He said, no, I mean that. Uh, and with those are words that I will remember for the rest of my life. So will I. And it, it really meant something to know that that Carl and I, in our victories, because the, Carl, the year after Carl became the first black mayor, I became the first black congressman mm -hmm. ever elected in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, just as an aside, 40 years later, in 2008, I'm still the only black male <laughs> that has ever been elected to Congress in Ohio. Boy. Isn't that something? <laughs> And that's not, and but, so, but you are certainly persistent, if <laughs> I can say so. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the thing that I'm trying to say to you, I think, is that uh, the knowledge that Carl and I uh, had some ability to be able to play a role in the pioneering efforts that went into laying the groundwork for the election of, a, of an American president, of African American, means so much. For instance, right after Carl got elected, what it did was to make 
African Americans in Detroit, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, all those cities say, well, if a Carl Stokes can get elected as the mayor of Cleveland, right, right. I can get elected as the mayor of Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and so forth. And they did. Mm -hmm. Every one of those cities thereafter acquired a mayorship as a result of what Carl had done in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And so this sort of set the example. And then we had finally we got two black governors mm -hmm. uh, in this period of time. And then, of course, the civil rights movement played a special role. The Supreme Court decisions played a special role. Uh, Rosa Parks getting up on that, uh, from uh, not getting up from that seat, on, on that, that bus. On that amazing uh, bus. Right, and that played a special role. Mm -hmm. All of these things uh, played a special role in the fact that in 2008, this nation can take pride, mm -hmm. and I mean real pride, and the fact that people who were slaves, now represented by an African American who is the President of the United States Highly of America. educated Thank right. Thank and has everything right. what we were looking for. He was the right man in the right place mm -hmm. at the right time. I want to know, please, about the time when you became a lawyer, an attorney. Mm -hmm. You and your brother studied law. Yes. Um, these days, was it common that two black guys would go to college and become attorneys? Was that already something during those years, what was normal? Well, um, not as normal as it is today. Mm -hmm. When I came out of law school in 1953, and my brother and I formed a law firm mm -hmm. together, just the two of us, mm -hmm. Stokes and Stokes. Yeah. And uh, at that time, in Cleveland, young black lawyers coming out of law school had to try and find some other black lawyer, most of whom operated law offices out in the community yeah. because they couldn't, they couldn't lease offices downtown in Cleveland and black lawyers could not go into major white law firms. Okay. It's interesting what happens in 40 years. Um, I am today senior counsel at Squire Sanders and Dempsey law firm in Washington and Cleveland. Uh, they have 12 offices around the world, somewhere that? around yeah. 850 lawyers. Yeah. And um, when I came out of law school, I wouldn't have been able to take trash out of that law firm. Today I'm senior counsel <laughs> in that law firm. Because we are writing history on the American Dream Show. I and think you that, are that, so that appropriate for my show, American <laughs> Dream. Come on, guys. Well, I, I do represent uh, uh, very proudly the change that has taken place in America. Yes. Um, when Barack Obama talked about change, I knew that change was possible. Uh, when I went to Congress, uh, there were only six black congresspersons in Congress the day that I was sworn in. Shirley Chisholm of New York, who was the first black woman ever elected to Congress, came in the same day I did. Bill Clay came in from St. Louis, Missouri. The three of us made it a total of nine. So they went from six to nine in 1969. Mm -hmm. Today, there are 42 black congresspersons in the Congress. America. That's change, yes. that's progress. Yes. Now, I, I, I'd say to you in all candor, I don't think it's where we ought to be, and I don't think it's where eventually we're going to be, but it represents progress, and in many cases the progress, uh, when you quantify it, uh, is minimal progress. But nonetheless, it's progress, mm -hmm. and it is reflective of the fact that uh, this is America, yes. and that we have our problems in this country, we have differences, but the beauty of it is that you can work out these differences, and we can continue to try and, 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 and compromise on things, and try to, to, to stand up and, 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 and stand up for what you believe in. Uh, in this country, you can stand up and attack the President of the United States verbally if you want to, and say how wrong he is about something. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew, I've been in countries where uh, if in the morning 
you criticize the head of that government uh, that evening, nobody would know where you are. Yeah. And so I look at things like that and understand yeah. that America is a great place, a great, wonderful country where notwithstanding our differences and our problems, that it is still the greatest nation on earth. God bless America. Whether you are looking for a total work environment or a combination of business and relaxation, Gurney's Inn Resort, Spa, and Conference Center will provide you with the best of both worlds. Our experienced conference staff will ensure your business gathering will run without a hitch. We have your business solutions. Contact our conference center now. It's a good show. It's a great show. Thank you. It's a show I will shall never forget, Congressman Stokes. On my American Dream show, I am so honored, sir. I know your daughter, Lori, since many years. America's sweetheart news anchor, most beautiful woman <laughs> on uh, the news network, I think she is. And with me are agreeing many, many people. Lori Stokes, WABC, is your baby. That's She's correct. your little one. That's true. She knocked with you on doors when you were running for but I was running for Congress I, this is the first and only p public office I've ever run for mm -hmm. I was a, mm -hmm. and when you were running Lori helped you at she least did. you want to believe she this did. or is that true did she yes and let me say before I answer that let me just say Lori loves you ah. she just <laughs> she really does she she just said to me daddy uh, you, wait till you meet her. She's incredible. She just loves you. And she talked about how great you are and how great this show is and how much I was going to enjoy it. And I just have to, to say that to you, you because she, she does. She really loves you. Oh, thank you. But when I ran for office, Lori was probably about five years old. Yeah. But nonetheless, the whole family got out and campaigned yeah, yeah. Uh, for my election. And Lori did, went door to door, with, uh, as small as she was, with little packages of material to give people and ask them, uh, please vote for my daddy. Oh, <laughs> that's good, 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 yes, yes, yes. And uh, in fact, when I was sworn in, the day I was sworn in, the only one of our children I could take on the floor was uh, Lori because she was the only one under 12 yeah. and you had to be be 12 or under yeah. and so I took her on the floor and the cutest thing was Ingrid that day when I stood up uh, to take my oath of office I had her up in my arms yeah. and when I raised my arm to take the oath she raised hers oh, <laughs> <that's adorable. laughs> so she was sworn oh, into Congress yeah, with yeah, me yeah, 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 yeah. well honestly I could see Lori very, very well going into politics because she has what it takes she is her father's daughter <laughs> that she is also her mother's daughter oh yeah and she is, uh, your wife is a woman you fell in love with, first sight, is that right? And still in love yeah. with. <laughs> I, I, I bet. How We've been married, uh, Ingrid, for 48 years. 48 So that years. means in two right, years. Right, two years we celebrate 50 years of marriage. That's well, right. Well, this is, I got to take my chance now. In 50 years, I mean, I'm sorry, in two years, when they are married 50 years, All right. on Valentine's Day, you have to come oh. to Gurney's, but don't tell her because okay. we are renewing vows. And then you guys going to renew your vows here at Gurney's and oh, overlooking boy. the ocean. Oh, that? that's <laughs> wonderful. The I only thing what you need to do is you need to treat her well or she might say no. After that. <laughs> <laughs> but after 48 years, I, I think I know how to treat her. <laughs> yes, yes. I got to try to keep her. <laughs> Congressman, um, we have a few minutes to close. Um, I, you know, people love to hear always big names and uh, if you would give me, let's say, half a dozen names, please, of people you would say, 
they really, really have made an impact on me. I will not forget then. Who would you put on that list, sir? I think, um, first thing, let me say this before I talk about other individuals who I would pick out. We are fortunate, my brother and I, to have had the mother we had. Yeah. Without her, I have no idea where we would have gone in life. People who we grew up around in public housing, uh, many of them are dead today or in prisons. Mm -hmm. It was a tough neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Thank God we had the kind of a mother who was a very religious woman and who inculcated in us the kinds of things that made us want to aspire to be somebody. Her greatest thing to us was she said, get an education, get something in your head so you don't have to work with your hands like I've worked with my hands all my life. And Ingrid, I didn't know what she meant until one night she was very ill. And I went in her bedroom with her and I sat in the dark and I reached out to take her hands to give her some solace and comfort. She was in so much pain. And when I felt those hard, calloused hands from scrubbing floors in order to give me and my brother just a high school education. That's all she thought she could give us. She never thought we'd go to college. When I felt those hands, I understood what she meant when she said, get something in your head so you don't have to work with your hands like I've worked with mine. And so I list her first. Secondly, I list Thurgood Marshall. Mm. Justice of the Supreme Court, yeah. who to me was one of the greatest lawyers this nation has ever seen. Um, uh, I need people like Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes, sir. Um, people like uh, Rosa Parks, yes. who if she hadn't refused to stand up on that bus that day uh, in order to give a white man a seat uh, and start a civil rights movement, become the mother of that movement, they gave me a chance to become involved in the civil rights movement and do that. And so those are three uh, people. And then um, it's hard to know who I would pick after that, but at least those three people will stand out in my mind as people I wanted to be like. Yeah. I want to be like you. Oh, <laughs> you're so kind, so sweet. It's, it has just been wonderful being on your show. You are everything Lori said you were and more. <laughs> you really are. Congressman, um, it's, I'm deeply moved, deeply moved. I'm talking to somebody who has been, who is living American history. That's what you are. Thank you God. are America. You have been writing history. You have been giving us uh, a presence. You have been inspiring. You have given us Lori, very important, <laughs> besides your other children, of course, yeah, who we yeah, absolutely we, adore. We, yeah, we have uh, three other children, yes, and I really no. just want to mention the fact, because we're fortunate, we've had four, four wonderful children, all uh, successful in their own sphere, and then seven just magnificent uh, grandchildren. Uh, I can't ask for anything more in life. God has been good to me. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly have been working and studying very hard to reach that very dream. Thank you. This dream, this American dream, does not just work by chance. There is a very, very hard work involved. And, sir, Thank you. you did it. You worked your back off. You had to study your back off yeah. to actually get to the point where you are today, sitting here overlooking yeah. the ocean at Gurney's End. Oh, listen, this is a beautiful place to come. I said to my wife this morning, I said, you know, sitting out here looking at this ocean, I said, this is where I could write my book, my memoirs. I said, this would be great and inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank you. Bye -bye.